In today's tutorial, we're going to look at rotating our bust start to the center front of the bodice block. This is a great little exercise to do and a really interesting. We're actually going to be creating a seam down the front of the bodice, uh, which is different to some of our other blocks. So lots of fun little techniques in this video. To follow along today, you're going to need your standard pattern drafting tools. As part of that tool pack, you're going to need your own bespoke bodice block, which you will have drafted with me in previous episodes. What you're going to see today is um, my block being uh, demoed in front of you on the video. However, uh, yours will look different, that's absolutely fine. The same steps are applicable to you step by step. You just follow along and make the adaptions to your own block. The purpose of this mini series is not to create finished uh, tops and finished garments. We're just simply looking at the technical exercise of moving the dart around the bodice block. By the end of this series, you should be able to confidently move the dart around and also maybe start playing about with a little bit more complex dart manipulations. These are really, really fun and the aesthetic and the effect that moving the dart around the bodice block creates is actually really interesting. So I hope you really enjoy this episode. Let's get straight on into it. To start off with, trace over your own block because we're going to be cutting into it and making adaptions as required. So on the block here, we've got our dart at the front, which is where our block is, right at the top going up here. And we want to rotate that around so that it sits on the center front. We have our apex point here, so we know where the, the widest bit of the bust is, which is fantastic. So we're going to be rotating that dart around from there to our center front. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is to draw a line which is um, perpendicular to the center front and intersects with the apex here. So just draw a nice strong line across there. Next, we're going to cut out the volume from the bust start using a pair of scissors. And then we're just going to cut down the new line we've just drawn, making sure to leave a pivot point at the apex. Remove the volume from the original dart. And then we're going to rotate this around using the apex as the pivot point until it closes up. Sellotape that together. Now you'll see we've got a nice little opening up here. It does look a lot smaller, doesn't it? But <laughs> don't worry because the same amount of volume is coming out um, of that area as what we had in here. It's just the fact that the edge of our center front is much closer to the apex than that one up there. So the angle uh, looks like it's got less, but it is absolutely fine. Okay, so that's fantastic. What we do now want to do is just move our dart location so it's not, so the point of it isn't going straight to the apex, but it is just two centimeters away from the apex. And that's the same as what we did with the waist dart down here. And the reason that we do that is because we don't want a sharp point going right to our apex. We just want a nice smooth curve around that area. So by offsetting the dart point, we then create a bit more of a generous and softer and um, curve around the bust. So take a piece of paper and just pop it underneath your pattern and then find the center point between the ends of the dart at this location. Draw a line from that midpoint to the apex and this becomes the center line of your new dart. Next we just want to mark a point along that line you just drawn which is two centimeters from the apex. And then we're just going to draw in the new legs of our dart so that they line up with that new dart point and continue all the way up to the center front. At this point, we've done all that we need to do for our block uh, manipulation. So we've moved the dart around, we've rotated it in place, but in order to actually create the top, we then need to add our seam allowances, which we're going to do now by creating our pattern pieces. So grab a piece of tracing paper and let's start drawing out our pattern. To start off with, just draw that new dart location and just extend the legs out a little bit beyond the center front. Now at this point, we are going to add a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance to our center front. And the reason why we've done that or had to do that is simply because uh, this is no longer a straight line, is it? So we can't cut it on the fold <laughs> as we might normally have done. Continue just drawing around the rest of the block as normal. 
add your seam allowance to your side seam. Add the seam allowance to your shoulder seam and then just trace around the arm side and also trace around the neckline. We're then going to annotate our pattern, marking where the apex is. And now the grain line is going to follow our existing center front line at the bottom down here. We don't want it to follow at the top because that's obviously going to rotate back in place once we sew up the dart and the neckline will then be realigned correctly. So this is our grain line. The only thing left to do is just to label up our pattern piece. Brilliant. Okay, so now we have created our pattern piece. We're now going to cut it out. We're going to move on now and create a pattern piece for our back pattern piece. Now this has not changed at all, so you can literally just trace over your own block and add your seam allowances for your back bodice. Add a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance to the center back. Draw in your waist and dart exactly as it is on the block. Add a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance to your side seam and then draw in your arm side exactly as it is. Add a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance to your shoulders and draw in your dart. Draw in your neckline. Grain line follows the line of the center back. Annotate your pattern piece to say that it's the back bodice we need to cut to and then add your pattern name. Wonderful, so now we've got both of our pattern pieces ready to go. Grab some calico, cut those out of fabric and make sure you transfer all of your dart lines and annotations. So we have our pattern pieces all cut out and ready to go. Now we have a lot of darts. We've got two on the back and two on the front for each piece. So that means we've got um, eight in total <laughs> to sew up. So it's time just to crack on and get those darts pinned and sewn. If you're not sure how to pin and sew a dart, refer back to our video 22, where I talk you through all of that technique in loads more detail. Front darts have now been pinned. Let's move on to the back darts. Next, I'm going to sew up those darts. I'll be using contrasting thread so you can see it on the screen above. Once you've sewn those darts, we're going to press the central uh, darts down towards the waist. We're gonna push the other ones towards the side seams. So just the center ones go down, everything else goes, oh, that way, <laughs> towards the side seams. So let's press those in place now. So we've now got our two front pattern pieces. Uh, we've got our darts at the waist and then our darts that we've rotated to the center front. We now need to sew that center front seam together. So pop the right sides together and pin it. Now, we want to be really careful that we are joining up that center seam really nicely. So grab your pins and just be as accurate as you can with pinning that in place beautifully. All right, moment of truth. Let's see how accurate that was. I think that'll do nicely. Brilliant. So, okay, so on our back now, we want to just press that seam open. Now let's just attach the back to the front. With right sides together, we're going to pin the back side seam to the front side seam. And the same for the other side. Brilliant, I'm just gonna sew up those seams now that we've just pinned in place. And then I'm going to pop it on and we can take a look at it together and see what we think. Well, I think this creates quite a nice linear look, doesn't it? With that nice strong line coming right down the front and those darts kind of just um, going off at right angles. Obviously you could have rotated those darts. One could go up, one could go down. Uh, you could have split them in two to create a triangle shape in the middle. So many different options, but there we have it. 
I hope you've really enjoyed watching this video with me and following along step by step at home. If you've got any images, feel free to post your comments or questions below the video. We always love to hear from our maker community here at Minerva. If you've got a Minerva account as well, feel free to upload your images of your pattern drafting experience and your pattern drafting journey upon our website where you can create a free account and upload your photos and join in with the Minerva Maker community. We have plenty more of these videos for you, looking at dart manipulation and then moving on to some more complex volume and adding shape and volume to tops. Thank you for joining me today. I'll see you next time. Bye.